The Cedars is a great restaurant with outstanding Mediterranean food. The Cedars takeout menu is second to none, featuring pizza, stromboli, hoagies, their famous lamb on the rod, and so much more. So when you're hungry and you want that Newcastle taste, make it Cedars. Now with two locations in Newcastle, 827 Addis Street on the east side and 1101 Highland Avenue. Call Cedars East, 724-658-9260 or Cedars North, 724-652-7657. Hello, friends. This is Angelo Parada for D&D Beer and Wine Supply. Yes, they're right up there in Hermitage, 2770 East State Street. And before you know, you had to be the king of beers and had to have a brewery if you wanted to make that special brew. Now all you need to do is take the short drive to D&D Beer and Wine Supply in Hermitage. They have everything you'll need to impress your friends and family with that special brew. Good morning and welcome to Newswatch, March 20th. Here's hoping you got that first cup of coffee because Newswatch is straight ahead for you. Whether it's a scheduled appointment or same-day service, DiCaprio Carpet Cleaning offers 24-7 service for commercial, industrial, and residential, as well as fire and water damage restoration. Using state-of-the-art technology, DiCaprio Carpet Cleaning experts are ready to professionally clean your carpet today. Call DiCaprio Carpet Cleaning for a free in-home estimate. Thank you for making us Lawrence and Mercer County's largest carpet cleaner. And remember, nobody gets your carpet cleaner. Wow, yes, it's fun to go to the Y, and now with great affordable rates, it's more swimming, more exercise, more family time. The YMCA in downtown Newcastle, or the Y Zone on Eleanor Drive in Shannon Township, welcomes you to a variety of programs, exercise, and fun events. Magisterial District Judge Melissa A. Amodi announces her candidacy for Judge of the Court of Common Pleas for the 53rd Judicial District. A lifelong resident of Lawrence County with 15 years of judicial experience, Judge Amodi is the only candidate with judicial experience running for this position. Because of her experience, Judge Amodi has a unique understanding of the issues and concerns of families, schools, and businesses throughout our county. Judge Amodi is a proud graduate of Newcastle High School. She attended the University of Pittsburgh, graduating cum laude, and obtained her law degree from Duquesne University School of Law. She passed the bar in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Judge Amodi respectfully asks for your vote for Judge of the Court of Common Pleas in the May 2015 primary election. She hopes to be a candidate on the Republican and Democratic ticket. The only judge running for judge paid for by the committee to elect a Modi for judge. Don't lie around like the winter snow. Bring it to NCTV 45. <laughs> Welcome to March 20th. Hopefully you have that first cup of coffee as we get to the top stories today in Newcastle, PA. This in from Matt Staniszewski, Newcastle Department of Economic Development, is hiring an intern for 
the summer for an important city project. This is a paid internship and you must meet guidelines and requirements set forth by the local government academy. There is a municipal job fair on March 20th, which is today, 215. The link below that they gave if you're interested in registering. If you cannot make it to the job fair, please follow the instructions to be considered, okay? And um, <coughs> you might want to call Matt or go to his the Facebook page. Um, just as a note that Matt Staniszewski will also be on our Focus NC talking about revitalization and community development. Tom Wolf, Governor of Pennsylvania, stopped in Newcastle Wednesday. If you didn't get a chance, <coughs> excuse me, if you didn't get a chance to check out our series on the governor, uh, his words, and a little slideshow, please do that. Superintendent of Schools, John Sarandria, indicated during the governor's visit that the last four years by the numbers were this. There was a reduction in staff from attrition and layoffs, 26 from attrition and three layoffs. Class size grew by approximately three students per class in K-12. Program cuts included tutoring, arts, and extracurricular activities. Pre-K went from a full day down to a half day. The reserves dwelling by two million plus over the last, dwindled by the two million over the last four years and the closing of three buildings and concessionary contracts. Now, Governor Tom Wolf, on his Schools That Teach tour was in Western, Northwestern Pennsylvania and that morning that he spent here in Newcastle, Governor Wolf spent the morning with students and teachers and administrators at George Washington Intermediate school in Newcastle, Lawrence County. The government, the governor's budget, a $1.3 million in increase in state funding for the Newcastle Area School District. Additionally, it will provide the district with an allocation of $7.8 million in property relief, tax relief over the next years. Governor Wolf has visited more than a dozen schools and colleges promoting his historic investment in education. During the last, the past four years, Pennsylvania took a step in the wrong direction, trying to balance the state budget on the backs of our schools. Governor Wolf said, this is not a formula for success. We can do better. It's just this simple. Our state is going to get stronger isn't going to get stronger until we invest in our students and education. Governor Wolf's proposed called the Pennsylvania Education Reinvestment Act is expected to generate over a billion dollars by 2017 by enacting reasonable 5% severance tax plus 4.7 cents per thousand feet of volume of natural gas extracted. It will follow a structure like neighboring West Virginia and will include the existing impact fee. He went on to say, we are the only natural gas producing state that does not impose a severance tax. Governor, Governor Wolf said, we can get Pennsylvania back on track starting with common sense severance tax that will help fund our schools, an idea with bipartisan support. But the governor said, writing the past wrongs is not enough. He will not stop there. 
We can't because the things, the way things were before were not good enough. Governor Wolf said far too long, we haven't paid enough attention to the fact that Pennsylvania ranks near the bottom of the country in state investments K-12 education. We need to change that. My plan is to increase our investment in public schools at every grade level. The governor's budget will increase the state's share of funding to public education to 50% for the first time in at least four decades while creating accessibility measures re requiring schools to demonstrate they are preparing students for success. That was a release from the governor's office. And also, uh, just to give you uh, some insight, uh, today the governor wa was um, in Chambersburg and planning John Hanger to discuss how the Governor Wolf's budget will make historic investments in education. Now the Governor's press office, uh, we appreciate their openness and their ability to get out a lot of information. And the Governor also released this. It's called Sunshine Week Roundup. Governor Wolf sets high standards for transparent government that works. On the inaugural day, Governor Wolf issued an executive order banning his administration from accepting gifts. Governor Wolf went to send a letter to dozens of state agencies urging them to enact the same policy, and he began the practice of electronically releasing his calendar to the public. Since these first actions, Governor Wolf has been praised statewide for his moves towards transparent, accountable government in Pennsylvania. In light of this year's Sunshine Week in the Commonwealth, the coverage of Governor Wolf's actions to give Pennsylvania open government works. And he was endorsed by the Philadelphia Inquirer, also, the Hanover Evening Sun, Times Tribune, just to name a few. And uh, we salute Governor Wolf on, and his press office for being able to put forth all that information. This also in from State Representative Chris Sonata. As Democratic Chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee, he was invited to participate in the House Appropriations Committee hearing on veterans' issues. And Chris Sonata, thank you for uh, giving us that update. Now, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, Two Rivers Artisan Coffee works at 11 South Mill Street. That's right by the bridge. They're going to have three local bands. Okay, beginning at 7 p.m., you can enjoy some great coffee, music. It's on their Facebook page, so make sure you look. Colville, you might remember them from the Saturday Night Music Special. They're going to be there, and that's the 21st, that's tomorrow at Two Rivers Artisan Coffee. So be sure you get out and take a look at that. Now we're going to be back with sports and weather right after these messages. It's Butts Flowers when you want a wide variety of flowers for any occasion. They also have a selection of fine gifts and more. Butts Flowers is conveniently located in downtown Newcastle at 120 East Washington Street. Call Butts Flowers at 724-652-7727 or toll free from anywhere, 1-800-443-7726. It's Butts Flowers in downtown. 
Bill's Bake Shop will make you happy. Owner Bill Cast and his staff keep the tradition going with all those bakery items you remember as a kid. Just to name a few, Bill makes cream sticks, cinnamon rolls, bear claws, cream horns, cannoli, cakes, pies, cookies, bread, pizza, and more. You can also buy homemade Cavitalian ravioli. Bill's Bake Shop, located 228 North Liberty Street in the Mahoningtown section of Newcastle, is open Tuesday through Saturday, 7 to 5, and Sunday, 7 to 2, closed Monday. Bill's, where smiles are everywhere. Call 724-654-4223. Newcastle. Welcome back, and now it's time for sports. Well, as you well may have known, March Madness is on us, and Pittsburgh, the console, is the site of the one of the regionals. Notre Dame, in an early game, took Northeastern 69-65, while Butler took out Texas. 56-48. Now, Butler is an Atlantic 10 team, and Notre Dame plays out of the ACC. They'll meet on Sunday at the console in Pittsburgh. And that'll be in the second round. Legendary golfer Arnold Palmer captured the Sylvan Heights Invitational with a 139. This by Betty Hoover De Rizzo, and this was on August 17, 1952. He was, uh, as it goes on to say, 21 years old from La Trobe, resident of the U.S. Coast Guard, paid at Newcastle Silver Knights Golf Course and smashed par by seven strokes, winning the 11th annual Western Pennsylvania and Eastern Ohio Amateur 36-hole medal tournament. Palmer beat Dr. Frank Chip Bellino of Youngstown, who shot an even par. Not considered a long hitter, Arnie held an eagle three on number 11 in the morning and a birdie four on the same hole that afternoon with a round of seven under par. He had birdies on two, four, 11, 12, 16, and 17. Hole's design have since changed. Palmer, at that time, was a four-time Western Pennsylvania amateur champion and a former state champion in high school and the winner of the Greensburg Invitational Tournament. Palmer celebrates his 85th birthday. He is the first person in history to receive all three of the United States' highest civilian honors, including the National Sports Award, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, and the Congressional Medal, Gold Medal. And this is a 1953 Palmer U.S. Coast Guard at Pinehurst, North Carolina. I thought that was an interesting bit of information as we go to the spring, okay, and uh, look towards golf. Now, we're going to be back with weather right after these messages. The Crane Room for your lunch and dinner rendezvous. You'll enjoy their pleasant atmosphere. The Crane Room takes pride in their wide variety menu. Appetizers, sandwiches, soups, salads, entrees, pasta, and the best burgers in town. Newcastle's best selection of domestic, import, and craft beers from around the world. And the Crane Room features a 35-tap draft system. Everyone goes to Pizza Joe's, and you've heard that friendly slogan for many years. And it's just as true today as it was when you first heard it. Watch the game right here on NCTV 45, and then head over to Pizza Joe's. 
Pizza Joe's uh, provided a grant for this podcast. Yeah, they have many great locations, State Street, Highland Avenue, Croton, and Shenango. It's your local pizza place. Everyone goes to Pizza Joe's. Welcome back, and now it's time to take a look at that Newcastle Lawrence County weather. Last night saw a mostly cloudy low of 30. Well, what can you expect for your TGI Friday? Mostly cloudy with a high of 46, and Friday night mostly cloudy with a low around 33. Saturday, partly sunny skies with a high near 51 and Saturday night mostly cloudy with a low around 25. Don't forget that Newswatch Weekend Edition with Gary West will be on for you Saturday morning. So as you're having that Saturday morning cup of coffee, don't forget to catch Gary. Now we're going to be back with a wrap up right after these messages. Ask about their daily. and gifts 2626 Elwood Road for the best in giftware and original merchandise stop by two piece thrifts and gifts check out their many treasures gently worn clothing original items one of a kind and also furniture Something for everyone. Men's clothes. Accessories for the house. It's two peas. Thrifts and gifts. 2626 Elwood Road. Stop by. There's a treasure waiting for you. It's Little Johnny's Pizza 2 in downtown Newcastle with a great variety menu that you will tell everybody about. Chris Quiera, the owner, is here with more information. Stop down and see us at Little Johnny's 2. We're located at 130 East Washington Street or give us a call at 724-657-2210. Don't lie around like the winter snow. Bring into NCTV 45. <laughs> Welcome back, and that's going to do it for us for this Friday the 20th. You made it through another week. Just a few notes of interest for any student at Newcastle High School. The Newcastle Junior High yearbook is now on sale. Uh, it's $25. If you purchase your book between, before uh, April 24th, you'll receive a $5 discount. So for the kids in the junior high at Newcastle, please be aware of that. And also, Poetic Expressions at the Hoyt. Um, contact them for more information, but any junior and senior high school student in Lawrence County. It's the celebration of National Poetry Month. Awards will present for their poems at the Poetry Festival on the 24th of April at 6.30. 
deadlines for entry <laughs> is actually today. Notification for awards will be April 3rd. So keep that in mind for those people that feel a little poetic. As for us here at NCTV 45, I can only say one thing. Make sure you get that second cup of coffee. And by all means, have a great Friday. I look forward to seeing you again on Monday. And don't forget about Newswatch Weekend Edition with Gary West this weekend. Have a great Friday, everybody.